The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of KSMQ Public Service Media Incorporated or its assigns. Hi, welcome to Garden Connections. I'm your host, Stephanie Passingham. Today we're going to learn how to make a beautiful bouquet from the flowers in your garden. Liz Reckmer and Kayla Myers share all their best tips. Artist Jim Wagner is with us to show us how to add a little something special to our gardens. And Chef Stephen Larson is working with mushrooms. Stay with us. Garden Connections is next. I am delighted today to have a special guest, Jim Wagner. He is a local artist, has done some beautiful work in a number of different forms, but today we're gonna to talk about how to beautify our gardens with not only flowers, because you are a gardener, yeah. but also with some lovely artwork. Thanks so much for being here. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. And I, I wanna start with this one because I just love it, because it doesn't look like it. You've got some really bright colors, so, but this is actually a very natural piece. It's a root from a cottonwood tree and it was uh, weathered and washed away at the lake where my sister had her cottage. And I thought, that looks like it wants to be something. Uh, mm -hmm. So I could sort of see a little dragon. And some of these probably extended farther, but I carved them so they looked more like horns or little mm -hmm. wings and stuff. Right. And then painted it bright colors. Bright colors, <laughs> terrific. It looks like a Viking dragon or something. Yes, it does, <laughs> it does. That looks fantastic. Yeah. I love how you've turned that yeah. natural yeah. piece into something mystical and fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> so where do your ideas come from? Oh, I, I think I'm always looking at nature and I, I walk around a lot of times with my head down <laughs> and I, I find, you know, rusted metal pieces that are interesting shapes. They might w go into a collage or something right. else. And, and that, that ring that's behind you is a ventilator uh, disc from an old farm home and it, you know, it has kind of a sun-like quality, mm -hmm. especially after I sprayed gold paint on it. Right. And then <clears throat> I even thought a friend of mine gave me this little bird that I thought could even go, you know, oh, hang, go in here. hang in inside if it fits. I think it would, yeah. But that'd be a good way of displaying that. I didn't know what else I would, where I could hang it, where it would have some visibility. <laughs> and. That, this I made for my sister's cottage many years ago, and I was so impressed one summer when the mayflies, oh. I don't know, they do their thing all of a sudden. Right, and, there they are. And then they're gone. But uh, she had that hanging. And these are just washers, right? Yeah, they're just washers and welding rod. That's, yeah. I'll be darned. I love how you use almost like found things. Yeah. I, I know I've seen a number of garden ornaments made yeah. of, like you say, old tractor parts or yeah. rusty old oh, things yeah. that you find on the farm sometimes. There's somebody that uh, I, we saw at a garden tour that did wonderful imaginary birds and they used a big field stone as the body and then they caged it with the metal. Oh. I wish now I'd bought. <laughs> oh, great, good ideas. Yeah. Well, let's talk about these plates and glass and things that we have, because this is what we're going to show folks how to make okay. today. But this <coughs> seems to be really popular, but I, I don't know where the idea came from. I mean, it just all sure of a sudden, either. there it uh, is. Uh, a lady demonstrated at our horticulture meeting one night, and uh, I was hooked. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's, it's kind of terrible, because once you start, you keep seeing more keep and seeing more. more, and, and, more. And, and then you keep making them, and finally I thought, this has got to come to an end somewhere. <laughs> but, well, uh, I love how these are, kind of like you say, found objects. This is yeah. a great example of one yeah. where, I mean, you can see, walk us through the parts, because this is a plate, and then you've got a bowl and something else. Yeah. What, are, what are the structural pieces you look for when you're well, gonna put I, one of these together? I like together? to have a background uh, uh, that would might suggest the, the petals on a, a flower, and then the trumpet or the inner, part of the flower, the bowl or the vase or candle holder or whatever mm -hmm. you find that works. Uh, it, it has to start to look flower shaped for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's true for everybody. And then because this plate was clear, I used these glass marbles mm -hmm. 
that you buy in, in bags. They almost look like the kind of ones that you put in the bottom of a fish tank. Yeah, it yeah. could be, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then oh. I take an old spoon and I hammer the, the bowl of the spoon until it's flat and then that gets glued on and bend it over, of oh, course. Right. And then that hooks into a pipe. Uh -huh. it, this is a <coughs> metal conduit pipe uh, that you'd string electrical wire through. Oh, so you find it in your local but hardware store? Or? I think you could use uh, PVC pipe. Mm -hmm. uh, I've used uh, a clothesline support. They're a little bit lightweight. They, mm -hmm. They're not uh, always uh, as sturdy as this. But you have to really pound this down into the earth. And if it rains a lot, then <laughs> sometimes they go over. Oh, it gets too muddy. Sure. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to get set up to show folks how to make one of these from scratch. We've got some different parts and things that we're going to do that. But in the meantime, while we're getting set up, let's visit the Central Gardens of North Iowa with Liz Reckimer and Kayla Myers to learn how to cut and create a beautiful arrangement of flowers from your garden. Well, we certainly have picked a gorgeous day to be out looking at flowers today. Yes. And here are some beautiful ones. These are gorgeous. What are these, Liz? This is spiderwort. Spiderwort. Well, we are here at the Central Gardens of North Iowa, and Liz Reckmer is here. She is the expert flower cutter. <laughs> they make bouquets on Fridays during the summer, and she is going to help us learn how to select the right flowers, and then later we'll learn how to get them arranged. So thanks so much for sharing your expertise. So this is spiderwort, and this is what I think of when I think of cut flowers, it's nice and tall, it's got a long stem, it's kind of sturdy. What are some typical flowers that people can use for cut arrangements? In my opinion, anything in the garden is fair game. And when okay. I think about putting a bouquet together, I think about interesting form, uh, color, or you can go just one color. But early spring, we have Mother Nature gives us purple and a lot of green and different shades. Mm -hmm. So, and then I think of how numbers look. When I think of a bouquet, I always think of three of this or six of that or one. It's always oh. uneven. I try and find something that still will uh, open up. Like this particular flower will, this blossom will close and another one will open the next day. So you can visualize that this color would be in the bouquet for three or four days. Okay, so let's take a look at this first plant right here. If you look carefully, you'll, you'll see a lot see of buds. A lot of them inside that are not yet open. And so that blossoms towards the back, as you mentioned. And yes. Let's show how deep you went there. I went almost to the bottom of the plant because that will increase the energy to the plant. Okay. And I'll take this one on the outside because no one will miss it. And then I would probably take one more. One more from that Yes. One. And I always try and take three of the same. Of the same. Okay. Yeah, or six. So nice and low. Yes. That's going to encourage the plant to, to send up more. And I want to show your bucket. <laughs> It's very utilitarian. You know, you see in magazines, garden magazines all the time, these beautiful wicker baskets that people are carrying. Yes. How, how practical is that? And you have a bucket filled with water. Right. And Do you really want to have water so you can put them in right yes. away? Yes. And normally I pick between 6 and 8 in the morning so that everything is cool and fresh. So sure, would you like sense. to pick something over there? Or? Sure. Let's take a look at those. These are spring anemones. Here, I'll let you do the honors. Great. All right. So this is a much bushier plant. And do I still go as low yes, as you did with the deep, other one? Find a nice thick stalk. And then I do what's called the shaky shaky. <laughs> if I'm not sure if the blossom's going to stay, I give it a little shake to make sure it's oh, firm. Okay. Before so I'm going to look it. for one that's got a bud, this one right, right here. So it'll last a little bit longer. Yep. See if I can get him. There. And notice how beautiful those leaves are. So even they are. it will add to the bouquet just, okay, and then give it a little shake and make sure, yep, see it's a good one. All right, sounds good, we'll put it in. So we want three of these. Please. And you said more towards the back. Yeah, if you can reach. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find one, that one's got a butt on it. Give it a little shake. You hung in there, okay, and one more. Yep, he's got a butt on him too. It's kind of hard to see, but here. All right, very good. 
Great. Well, you have some more beautiful ones up on the hill. Let's go check those out. Okay. I want to show you one of my favorite trees to cut from in the garden. Trees? Yes. For, for a bouquet? Yes. If you notice, there are some really cute little f fruits on this tree. Sure. And anything like this just adds to a bouquet. And you're so nice and tall, we'll get a branch that's way up Sounds there. Sounds good. So let's see here. How about this one? This one's got a lot of nice interest to it. Yes. Now look at that. They're you, almost like little pine cones. Right, and if you cut way up by the limb, if I can help you, hold it down. So do you want this big a branch? I would cut there and there. We'll have two pieces of here it. Here and here. Correct. Okay. And pinch hard. <laughs> pinch hard is right. Ooh, nice and sharp. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Great. Sure. All right, and then you have these beautiful peonies. I love peonies. They last too, too short. So you have a number of buds that have opened. You've got some that are closed. I would take like two buds and one open off of this bush. Okay. Sure. So there's a variety in yes. here. Yes. Okay, so we're going to take this one. Because really from the view, from the sidewalk standpoint, we're sort of towards the back. Exactly. And then it doesn't detract from this bed. There we go. And we'll use all these greens too. Like sometimes we'll peel off the lower okay. and stick those in a little vase. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go visit with Kayla and she is going to show us how we can arrange these beautiful flowers that Liz has helped us cut. All right, well, let me show you what we've got here. Okay. And you can tell me what we're going to do with it. So we picked uh, spider wart. Mm -hmm. And I forget what she called these white ones. What are these white They're ones? They're a sink foil. A sink foil, okay. Mm -hmm. And then more purple, mm -hmm. which is That's not quite as tall. Okay. We obviously picked quite a few things this morning. Mm -hmm. What is your general guideline in terms of how large your container needs to be to support the flowers that you've chosen? Well, first of all, if there's an event and a table, mm -hmm. I, I choose a vase according to what it's going to be. If, okay. if it's just a gift and, and I have a lot of flowers, I'll take a big vase. And then I always recommend as things start to die back or get spent, mm -hmm. go into a smaller vase, whatever is oh, okay. still left. So when you you're refreshing move. the water, mm -hmm. great tip. Yes. All right, well, let's get started. What would you like first? Well, I usually like to start with something as a collar oh, to give you okay. a frog, so to speak. Sure. So I really enjoy using hosta leaves. Right. Um, you want them to get down to the bottom of the vase. So um, it will draw up Lovely. and again at yep. the angle. Nice showcase. Now, something else that I suggest quite often, especially with people who are just getting the hang of this. You want your frog, but sometimes with taller things, they flop and mm -hmm. look unkept. Yes. So I have devised a little trick. Scotch tape. Okay. And just stick it right to, oops, get it on the right side here. Stick it to your vase and give yourself an X. So okay. you're actually have some support. Have and some support, and you can't see it. It disappears. Right. Okay. And that will keep the stems from hopping up too out of the, out of there. So Great tip. That right in All there. Right. What would you like next? Oh, how about let's start with some height. So let's take those two taller peonies, okay. and we'll talk a little bit about um, how do you decide how long they need to be. Because mm -hmm. we, she, when she cut, when we cut them, she said to cut them as low as possible. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on what you're trimming, but the peonies do better putting on blooms next year if we cut deep. All right, good. Okay, and then I like to say, I like to say for height, at least the same height as your vase. So if this is a 10 inch vase, then you want 10 your inches per above. proportion is 10 inches taller. Okay. And then I'll break that rule. <laughs> <laughs> and add some foliage, grass, twigs, or something okay. to mm -hmm. give it a little bit more height. And then you want to go another half, again, as high okay. with that. So I'm going to cut this about right here. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to take off a few of these bottom leaves. And I save these leaves because there are other vases that they'll fit into nicely. And is that just so the arrangement's not so full on the bottom? Or I've heard that leaves in the water is I, a bad thing. Very good, Stephanie. I was just going to say that. I take those leaves off for a reason, because that's where the bacteria will begin. Any, okay. any foliage that's under the water gets soggy really mm -hmm. fast, so and then that bacteria okay. starts really quickly. Okay. So I do try to keep as much out from there as possible. Okay. okay. And then this one, I'm also going to use the other half of this that we trimmed back for more foliage within oh, sure. the arrangement. Excellent. 
Um, let's see what else do you have in there. Oh, well, let's try we some actually of those. A treat. <laughs> let's look at the nursery here. Yes, I like those. This Liz is so good about things like this. This has some of the most interesting great texture seed pods. Yep. These are from last year, and these are the new ones are coming ones? on. Okay. So okay. nothing is nothing is excluded from these bouquets. And I'm hanging on to those because okay. I have a plan for those right. for later. Great. I would like to add some purple here. Okay. Do you want tall let's, or short? Let's go oh. with the mugwort. Okay. This one is always a challenge because nature has made this blue or foliage so funny. But <laughs> I like to use it. I like to see that extra um, texture always mm -hmm. in the bouquet. And I'm going to make this one a little bit higher because I want that to stick out to stick up above. I'm going to call this some of that grass and extra interest that goes up higher. Great. Is there another one of there those? Is, there okay. is. Okay. I think we have three of those as well. I bet you Liz was planning for that. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Okay, we need a little bit more, and I always like to add some white just to make the I colors have a pop. Now this is looking a little droopy. We it, may let's not have give got it another it back cut and see the... if we can't get that to come back up because it will do that. If you we may not have gotten it into the water. Water deep far enough, enough. and yep. that's something important when you're cutting to be sure and get everything down into the water. But it will come back on. You will. It right. will. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Beautiful bridal wreath oh, that, wow. that, looks that great. is got some chocolate to it. So that's mm -hmm. going to complement our peony as well. Sure. And give us that f little, f uh, what do I, lacy effect. Mm -hmm. And it's not quite so green. I mean, that those tree mm -hmm. branches really put a lot of put a lot of foliage in there. And that, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm calling this color rather than foliage. Right. Right. Today. Mm -hmm. Great. Looking and another good. penstemon over here. Take off our foliage. Here at the garden, of course, we we work with what the garden gives us. Right. So early in the spring, there isn't as many colors to choose from, mm -hmm. but. Texture, but, you've got texture, but texture. Yes, I love this. Exactly. This looks fantastic. Well, well thank you ever yeah, so much. It's full. It's colorful. It's got texture. It looks beautiful. Well, thank you so very thank much. Thank you for showing us what thank people can you. do with flowers from their very own garden. We're back, and we're here with Jim Wagner, and he's going to show us how to put together one of these beautiful flowers. So, to start with. We probably need some clean, dry pieces. That's for sure. Now, I picked up some uh, solid pieces, which gives a completely different look. Mm -hmm. These glass pieces are so nice because the light play through them. But I like the radiation pattern of this. That really wants to be a flower. Yes, I it think. does. Yeah. I, I kind of yeah. love that when yeah. I get to that. And then, of course, there are some things that already have flowers printed right on yeah. it. But if you're looking for a very inexpensive option, some of these things make simple projects, especially if you sure. are doing a children's yeah. party or want to uh -huh. you know, try to do a, yeah. a low cost piece. Yeah. So, so we need some adhesive. Now the nice thing about this adhesive is <clears throat> that it is a, a kind of rubbery substance when it dries. It's waterproof, but it takes uh, up to 48 hours to be fully to set. hardened and okay. set. Okay. And so you wouldn't be able to hang it up right away. Okay. And it's liquid enough that when you put it on the pieces, and if, if this table weren't level, mm -hmm. Your your flower parts would shift. Yeah, and I've had that happen already. <laughs> okay. So then you wind up with some uh, inner parts. Now what I usually do <coughs> is put the, the adhesive right around the the outer ridge, whatever it looks like it's the highest point on mm -hmm. on okay. the bowl. Should we do that? Yes. Let me just do that so I can see better. <coughs> But uh, the nice thing is that this adhesive is clear, so it isn't going to distort anything that's clear or mm -hmm. see-through. Right. And then, because we can see through this, we, we don't have too much trouble centering. And just put it in place. Okay. And then you brought this wonderful candle this holder. This is a candle holder, yeah. And <coughs> it, it becomes the centerpiece then for the for the flower. We'll do the same thing here. And that's not an especially large amount of adhesive. I mean, you're putting no. 
it's it's bigger than a pencil lead, but it's not yeah. not as big as a crayon. How's that for But you just want to make sure that any of the the high ridges that are going to make contact have some adhesive, and then it should be no problem. And here again, we have that ability to see the center, which I think is important. And this little candle holder has kind of a center, so you do see mm -hmm. something, but if you had a, a marble that was a different color or that would, maybe with the blue bowl, it isn't necessary. Maybe pop it with some of this orange. Yeah, put a little orange marble in there and voila, you wow. got a flower. Now for the back, the flower has to hang on a pipe. <coughs> I use uh, metal conduit pipes, mm -hmm. and they're just big enough around to take the end of a, a spoon Oops, handle. Sorry. And I can show you on this one. I've taken a, an old teaspoon, and I hammered out the bowl of the spoon so it's flat. It's flat. Mm -hmm. And the more rumply bumps you got on that, the better, because that helps the adhesive cling to it. Okay. And you, and put, you use the same adhesive to yes, attach the spoon. And I put a good amount so the the whole spoon is hand is covered with that. And then that is has to, that has to dry too. Yeah. But you can see that when it's we can hook that right into the tube and then it there stands. And these are marvelous, especially if they are all glass. When the sun hits them, they're just spectacular. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, I bet they are gorgeous. Well, right now, we are going to go to Chef Stephen Larson, who is the chef at the Quarter Quarter Restaurant in Harmony. He is going to make a recipe dealing with mushrooms. Let's check it out. On Garden Connections, we'd love to see photos of your garden. Or if you have questions for our garden experts, contact us by emailing garden at ksmq.org or like us on Facebook. Welcome to the kitchen. In today's fast-paced foodie world, sometimes we lose track of some of the great old ingredients that are around there. Take mushrooms, for instance. You can get almost any kind of fresh mushroom in the grocery store these days. Shiitake, uh, portobello certainly, sometimes even fresh morels. But what about good old button mushrooms? They've been around forever. They're very tasty, easy, and inexpensive. So I'm going to do a classic preparation with the classic ingredient, button mushrooms, done in the Italian style with garlic, red wine, uh, and Parmesan cheese. So first thing we need is some mushrooms. Uh, I have a pound of mushrooms here, and if you have large mushrooms, you're going to want to cut those into uh, quarters so that you've got something a little bit smaller. Then we need some garlic. I have three large cloves here. The recipe takes four. So we'll show you a quick way to do this. Now don't go crazy on crushing these. Just crack them a bit and they will pop right out of their skins. I have a 10 inch skillet here over moderately high heat. To that I'm going to add a tablespoon of nice rich extra virgin olive oil. and a tablespoon of butter. Now we can add our garlic to that. And we will let that cook until that just starts to color. All right, so that's what we're looking for. That's the color we want, just a little bit golden. Add our mushrooms to that. And we will let those cook. We need to season them. It's very important to season things while they're cooking. That's what starts the flavoring and, and enhancing process. All right, while those are finishing for a couple of minutes, we're going to talk about the wine here. I'm going to use a half a cup of red wine. Uh, in general, when we're talking about cooking with wine, uh, we're talking about dry wines, unless it's a very specific dish. Since this is an Italian style dish, I'm actually using a nice Chianti. All right, 
half a cup of wine in the pan. And we will just let that simmer until the wine is reduced to just a couple of tablespoons left. So we'll shut that off. We're going to add about a tablespoon of that parsley. Give that a quick toss through. Then over to our bowl. Scrape the pan out. And then we're going to top that with some Parmesan cheese. So we're going to give this a very generous grating of that Parmesan. And of course, for pretty, we'll add a nice little sprig of that Italian parsley. So there we have it. Button mushrooms braised in red wine and garlic, a little olive oil, parsley, and Parmesan. Revisiting the classics can be really tasty. Well, I can guarantee that that mushroom recipe is excellent. So we're here with Jim Wagner and we are talking about art in the garden as it complements your arrangement. And I hope we've inspired you to create some garden art of your own. And I hope to see you next time. I'm your host, Stephanie Passingham.